What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master 1 and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. So today we got update 2.2 and a bunch of new weapons and refines. So in this video I'm going to be covering all of them and analyzing them and giving you guys the skill sets which work with the new weapons and the refines. I highly recommend you to see all of the builds and then decide because all of these weapons use divine dues and those are very rare and hard to accumulate. So let's begin with Raven, and oh my god, Raven has become an offensive monster with this refine, but his normal Basilicos is basically an unrefined Aught Claire. Basilicos can be used on Raven and he can abuse specials like Dragon Fang and Draconic Aura because of the minus one cooldown. His naturally high speed is good as he can double more enemies and thus charge his specials faster. Upon refining Basilicos, he gets life and death 3 built into his weapon and he becomes the ultimate glass cannon and with this he can reach 55 attack and 40 speed unboosted which is tremendous for an unmarched unit or unboosted unit. Raven has become one of the best offensive infantry units because of this refine. So let's take a look at some of the builds you can run on him with this refine. Life and Dead does stack with his weapon and you can run the first set which gives him 60 attack unboosted which is more than enough to make use of Heavy Blade and Draconic Aura. And Draconic Aura works perfectly with this set because he will have it at 2 cooldown because of Basilicos and when he's in the desperation range he will proc it on his second hit. The second set uses Fury if you do not have access to Life and Death 3 so uh, you can definitely use Fury and it's a bit easier for him to get into the desperation range uh, with this skill and Dragon Fang is also a special which is great for Raven and provides him with a huge damage output of 29 points whenever he triggers it. The third set is the most premium set for him and if you've got an extra Christmas Robin lying around then Brazen Attack Speed bumps his attack to 62 and his speed to 47 which is insane and it synergizes perfectly well with Desperation. So in general you want to make use of attack boosting specials like Draconic Aura and Dragon Fang and he's an incredible user of Heavy Blade Sacred Seal which can now be forged actually after this update. So for those of you who missed Heavy Blade Sacred Seal as a Tempest Trial reward, you can go ahead and forge that. You can also run to Sparrow but his defenses are low as it is so it's better to go all out and Gale Force can also be run on Raven as it will proc nicely with Heavy Blade because of its 4 turn cooldown. Wrath is also a great option you can run on him and Basilicos makes Glimmer a 1 turn cooldown special and when he's in the Wrath range he will always have Glimmer ready at the start of each turn and with his humongous attack Glimmer works actually really well. Now keep in mind that these builds also work with vanilla Basilicos because it's still a pretty good legendary weapon it's just that you won't get life and death 3 so if you do not refine it then Raven will not be as strong of a glass cannon but still he's gonna be pretty good. Raven can also appear as a 4 star unit so if you want to upgrade one then plus speed IV is his best boon and minus resistance is his best bane. Plus attack IV can also work out but plus speed means that he will be doubling pretty much everyone so you do want that. Now let's take a look at Felicia. So Felicia's plate was nothing really too impressive in Fire Emblem Fates but in Heroes this weapon is actually insane. So her vanilla weapon has got defense smoke and res smoke built into it and it also calculates the damage using the lower of foe's defense or resistance so it functions like a refined dragon breath but it is actually better because the refined breaths only do that against ranged units but with this weapon Felicia can target lower stat of even melee units which is something dragons cannot do. So this allows Felicia to do a number on units like Zelgius, Sigurd and Hector who have got high defense but low resistance. This is absolutely fantastic and makes Felicia much more viable now. The smoke skills built into her plate also helps a lot. Now if you refine this weapon then she will gain an extra cooldown charge if she's against a unit who uses tomes. So she will gain an extra charge both on their attack and on her own attack and both in player phase and in the enemy phase. This effect is a reference to how Felicia's Plate was the only magical weapon in Fire Emblem Fates which allowed user to proc his or her skills. Flame Shuriken didn't really let you proc your skills so that's why people sometimes use Felicia's Plate in online Wi-Fi battles so that uh, Felicia can proc 
stuff like Rent Heaven. This extra effect allows Felicia to check mages even better and take care of them, and Prog glaces every round as long as she can double the tome unit. The effect says that it does not stack in its own description, but by that it means it does not stack with skills like Flashing Blade, but it does work with Quick on Pulse and Fentry Pulse. The 14 might of this legendary weapon helps Felicia a lot as she has got a pretty low attack stat. So let's take a look at some of the builds you can run with her new weapon. The first build is a standard one for Felicia and Fury is a great budget option for her and Guard is pretty good to prevent threats like Winter Tharja from blowing her back with her own special like Blazes and uh, she can easily take care of Winter Tharja with Guard skill and by proccing her own special. Guard also allows you to take on Quick Unpulse Moonbow Reinhardt and using Guard you can attack Steady Breath users like Brave Ike without giving them the extra charge. However, if you do not like Guard on her slot B then you can also run Quick Repost, Escape Route, Cancel Affinity, Desperation or even Wind Sweep. Glaces is her best special so you should keep that and it's much easier to proc now against mages. The second set is a very expensive set for her but by using it she can debuff all stats of the enemies. Wind Sweep is a pretty nice skill on her because she can attack distant counter armored units safely and debuff them and against mages her matchups is already pretty good and she can also make use of her high speed. So this set makes Felicia into a really great debuffing unit and a magic check. The third set utilizes attack rest bond which is a really really great skill for Felicia but it's a shame that it's locked to seasonal units. You can even run distant defense 3 if you want to in place of this skill if you do not have this skill and quick repose allows her to always double range units and against mages always proc glaces. She does have a very high speed but it's not enough to double blade tome life and death mages who easily have more than 40 speed so quick repose definitely helps. Distant defense is a fantastic seal for her which increases her magic bulk and it also contributes to her glacies damage. Attack smoke can also be run if you want to focus more on debuffs. Like I said before even if you do not refine her weapon these builds will still work with her normal Felicia's plate. If you're gonna be upgrading a Felicia then the best IVs to go for is a plus attack IV as her boon and minus defense as her bane. Plus speed also works if you plan on using wind sweep but overall a plus attack is gonna be much better. Now let's take a look at Sheeta. She gets Wing Sword as her weapon and it is effective against cavalry and armored units. This is a reference to her weapon Wing Spear which was also effective on horse and armor units but since she's a sword unit in this game she's got this sword. Having a weapon which gives effectiveness against two common movement types is a really good thing but the problem is that Sheeta does not have a very high attack so even with the effective damage she's not really gonna be doing huge chunks of damage unlike Micaiah who's got a much higher attack and same effectiveness but compared to Mikaya, Shida has got a much higher speed so she can double units and still kill them. So it's highly recommended to go with a plus attack IV which is also her super boon so she gets plus 4 attack instead of plus 3. Still Shida is much more viable now and has a niche compared to other flyers and she's actually pretty good now. Upon refine you get flashing blade 3 built into her weapon which is actually fantastic because her speed is one of her strongest stats and Shida does depend on her special for damage. So this is great. So let's take a look at some of the builds you can run on her. The first set is a pretty good budget set and Iceberg will always proc against a melee enemy if Sheeta can outspeed them and this definitely helps her with her damage output. I prefer speed plus 3 as the sacred seal over phantom speed because with speed plus 3 she can actually double more units instead of just proccing flashing blade with phantom speed. Glacis on her can also be run if you want more damage but iceberg will proc more and help you get more 1 round KOs. Attack speed bond is a skill which uh, Valentine Lin has and she's gonna be coming out tomorrow so if you do get extra copies of her and you really really like Sheeta then you can go with the second set which is really expensive. Flyer formation works perfectly with attack speed bond and this is a really high investment set for a flyer emblem team. The third set utilizes for Sparrow and she will have much more power than the Fury set and defense plot is also a good option with her high resistance. The fourth set is a distant counter set with Vantage and Quick Repost combo. Now Flashing Blade doesn't have the greatest synergy with an enemy face skill like Distant Counter but still with Wing Sword and Distant Counter she can take on armored mages and uh, ranged cavaliers and do a lot of damage to them. The fifth and the final set is only for Flashing Blade refined because it has got Gale Force and if she outspeeds a unit and if they can counter attack then in a single round of combat she can proc Gale Force which is really good. If you're gonna be upgrading a 4 star Sheeta then the best IV for her is Attack Boon as like I said it's a super boon 
Boon and she still has very high speed to make use of Flashing Blade but if you really want to build her with her Flashing Blade then go with plus speed IV. For her Bane go with minus HP IV. Now let's take a look at Hinoka. So she gets Hinoka Spear which gives plus 4 speed and plus 4 attack when there is an infantry ally or a flying ally within 2 spaces of her. This is good because she has Hone Flyers by default so she can function really well on a Flyer Emblem team but I don't think this weapon without a refine is worth using on Hinoka over her Brave Lance plus because Hinoka doesn't have a very high speed stat and without Brave Lance she will have trouble one round queuing fast sword units like Mia and Ira which she previously could with Brave Lance but it's worth running if you're gonna be refining it because she gets flying an infantry guidance skill on her weapon which gives really good utility for your team and because of this refine, Sonaki and Hinoka are pretty much best friends as they can support each other with their refine and also cover their weakness to a degree. The buff in combat which she gets is actually in both phases. Here are some of the builds you can run on her. The first one is a budget set and it allows her to reach 58 attack and 42 speed with Hanoka's spear. It's really important to use speed plus 3 secret seal um, so that you can have more speed on her and it provides her with more chances of doubling enemies. You can also run Swiss Sparrow but her defenses are not something too impressive to be worth preserving and sacrificing a 5 star unit over in my opinion. So the second set is a life and death set which lets her reach 60 attack and 41 speed unboosted. Heavy Blade Sacred Seal works really well with her high attack and she can use Draconic Aura or even run something like Gale Force on this set. The third set has got incredible synergy on a Flyer Mom team leading to a lot of mobility options for Hinoka and her allies. Like I said with the Sheeta set, Flyer Formation and a Bond skill like Attack Speed Bond from Valentine Lin have got incredible synergy and all her allies and herself can teleport so much with this set. It is actually going to be really fun to play with and if you're going to be facing this as an arena defense team then it's going to be annoying. I highly recommend you to run her on a team which can provide her with a speed support like Hone Speed or Goat Flyers because she desperately needs that and obviously the best IV spread for her would be plus speed boon and minus resistance as Bane. But since she cannot appear as a 4 star unit as many units have got an upgrade can, it's hard to optimize her. Now let's take a look at the Falchion refines. Let's start with the Hero King himself. So first of all, all Falchions evolve their Renewal 2 built into their weapon to Renewal 3 and it stacks perfectly with Renewal slot B skill. Marth has got a refine which gives him Drive Spectrum skill, meaning that he can buff all stats of allies within 2 spaces by 2. The buffs he gives are spur bonuses so they cannot be panic ployed and blade tome mages cannot add these to their attack. So he gets a refine which makes him more of a support unit but at this point we have seen a lot of them. Brave Lucina in particular compares to Marth as she can also buff all stats of allies with spur buffs but Marth can also provide the passive healing which Lucina cannot thanks to his Falchion. This refine doesn't really help him in combat against dragons and it doesn't really look very impressive at first but if you want a good buff bot I guess you can invest into him because he can be summoned as a 4 star unit. I guess his refine is a reference to Marth being a leader and always supporting his allies. These are the sets which you can run on him. Marth can act as a spur buff bot with drive speed from a 4 star tail 2 and drive defense sacred seal. He can also be a passive healer with renewal and his falchion refine. Alternatively, you can also run Hone Attack Sacred Seal to give his allies more offensive support. He can work with any kind of IV spread honestly because he's just a buff bot but uh, with this set his best boon would be speed and best bane would be resistance. So let's take a look at Arm. Um. In my opinion he's got the best falchion refine out of all of the falchion lords. His refine allows him to attack twice when he's at 100% HP and uh, he takes 5 damage after the combat. So basically this gives him a temporary brave sword at full health and this is amazing. In the description it says attacks twice and it is different from Siegmund's refine which says follow up attack. So it does behave like a brave weapon and not like Ephraim's refine. This effect is a reference to his double lion skill from Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia. To give you an idea how insane this refine is, let's take a look at this calc. An unmerged neutral IV arm with death blow glimmer and heavy blade can one round kill a plus 10 merged fully invested Noe who has got a defense refined breath 
and Alma is basically the best dragon slayer in the entire game, capable of even crushing blue dragons with just the help of Heavy Blade and Glimmer. I love how Alm was considered to be the worst Falchion user in the game, and with this Falchion Refine, he is pretty much the best Falchion user in the game. So it's really amazing what these refines can do for these old units. If you run a Dragon Emblem team, then Alm is gonna be really annoying to face for your team because dragons work best in the enemy phase, and if you're gonna be baiting him out, then it's gonna be turning out bad for your dragon. His refine also has got great synergy with the recovery he gets from Falchion. So let's take a look at his build. The first set is the one which I used in the calc. Glimmer is a fantastic option for units who have got type effectiveness, and with Glimmer he can do a lot of damage to dragons. Deathblow is fantastic with this Falchion Refine, and the extra renewal helps him heal 20 HP in case Alm takes any kind of other chip damage from the enemy. You can also run some other slot B skills instead of renewal, like Wings of Mercy, Cancel Affinity, or even Sword Breaker to quad attack sword units, or drag back so that Alm can return back to his allies. We've got Marissa recently, and Alm has got amazing. Um, HP so he can definitely make good use of infantry pulse because of it and heavy blade is necessary to proc glimmer on the second hit against dragons. The second set is a wind sweep set which allows him to freely poke melee range units and even take them out. Wind sweep does not cancel the falchion's effect because it's an innate ability rather than a follow up attack. Also, Wind Sweep does not work against dragons. A lot of people have this misconception that Wind Sweep just gives you a Fire Sweep effect, but it doesn't work against dragons. If you do not want dragons to counter attack against you, then you will have to run Water Sweep from Soren. But uh, overall, Wind Sweep is a much better skill, and it's his default skill, so he can easily make use of that. Alm can also make use of Panic Ploy, but keep in mind that dragons have a pretty high HP, so he will not be able to proc Panic Ploy against a lot of the dragons. Phantom Sweet Sacred Seal, even at version 2 will help him a lot um, proccing his wind sweep. If you do not run wind sweep on the second set then Alm can also quad attack, slow minus attack dragons and slow armored units with the help of life and death. The third set is for the people who really want to crush dragons no matter what and you can run cancel affinity which goes right through triangle adept Noe and Noe running sword breaker does nothing because breaker skills do not prevent the consecutive attack of brave weapons, they can only prevent the follow up attack. So the only hope of Noe living this alm every time reliably is by running Deflect Melee Sacred Seal which is pretty uncommon. So if you are a Dragon Emblem user in Arena, you should definitely watch out for this alm. The best IV spread for him is plus attack IV and minus res. Now let's take a look at Krom and Lucina. All Awakening Falchion users have got the same Falchion refinement which literally represents how their bonds give them strength because they have got a quad bond skill. This is actually pretty amazing and makes them solid balance units. So these are the sets which you can run on Maz Lucina and Lucina because both of them have got the same stats. The first build is a good budget build which makes her a pretty good passive healer and can also be used to put her on the front lines. She can reach 32 defense with Fury and her Falchion Refine which is really good for a melee unit. The second set is a very expensive set that uses Valentine Lin's attack speed bond. And since she is a passive healer, she can easily reach the range of Wrath uh, with Reciprocal 8 and she will have 59 attack and 45 speed and she can hit pretty hard with Glimmer using that. Now previously, uh, people used to use this set with uh, Woodall Plus, but with Falchion Refine, she can get a lot of attack and speed, so that's why you can definitely use Wrath. And these bond skills are actually very useful in the enemy phase as it's much easier to position your unit in the enemy phase. So she can run a high SP cost set for arena points and function well in the enemy phase. You can also run close defense to make it better for her against dragons and Lucina's best boon would be speed and best pain will be HP or resistance. She makes good use of all of her stats so Mass Lucina with her neutral IVs is actually pretty good and a lot of readable players have got like a plus 5 merge mass lucina so far so this is definitely a really good update for free to play players Krom can also run the first set which is a standard medic set. Krom's high HP stat means that you can put Marissa to good use with infantry pulse and if you've got an extra fee arm from the legendary banners then you can run the second set and he will have massive amounts of physical bulk. He reaches 46 defense in the enemy phase with the second set. Steady breath can also be run if you want to invest into him more and lastly you can run a just encounter set. Even though his resistance initially looks pretty bad, his magical bulk isn't all that bad because of his high HP. 
HP. Also with Distant Defense and Falchion Refine, he can reach 27 resistance which is pretty decent. The best IVs for him is plus attack IV and uh, the best bane for him is probably minus speed IV because the speed is low as it is but minus HP IV can also be done because he has got ample amount of HP. Now let's take a look at uh, King Zephiel, the final unit for this video. Zephiel's Threatened Defense 2 evolves into Threatened Defense 4 I guess because it's minus 60 buff and it does not work against dragons which is a reference to how Zephiel considers dragons as uh, perfect creatures who are superior to humans and should rule the earth. So I guess that's why he has that but in the past during the war with dragons Exax was actually used to slay dragons by the legendary hero Hartmut which is pretty conflicting for its meaning. His extra effect is Distant Defense 3 which goes perfectly with Distant Counter. For those of you who have sacrificed a Hector for him, this makes him really bulky on both spectrums and he can run two main sets. The first set is a budget set and it's for the people who want to use Zephiel but don't really have a Hector to spend on him. Earth Boost works fantastic on him because of his high HP and with close defense he can have even more bulk. This set is just for making Zephiel a frontline unit. The second set is a full investment set which requires this encounter and uh, Vengeful Fighter I guess can be replaced with Quicker Post if you want and Double Distant Defense gives him 38 resistance in the enemy phase which makes him extremely extremely bulky and the problem I've got with these weapons is that you don't really get enough Divine Dews so you can only upgrade like what two legendary weapons so far I think so it's definitely pretty bad and they should definitely give us more divine dues because these weapons are absolutely amazing so it's really important to use your divine dues more carefully and of course if your favorite character gets a refining upgrade then you should definitely just go for them and if you've got a unit with a good IV and if they've got a refine then you should definitely go for them as well but for the people who have got a lot of these units in their boxes and have a dilemma on on which weapon to upgrade first, I've got a ranking of these uh, refines for this update. Now keep in mind this is solely my opinion. Um, I'm not really forcing this on anyone, this is just meant to help people a bit who are having trouble um, selecting the weapon they want to upgrade and this is just my ranking. So I consider Arms Refine to be the best one we have got in this update. If you play in tier 20 arena, you will face dragons so much and they are so annoying a lot of the times and Alm can easily crush them, even the blue dragons, if you run a proper set. So Alm is definitely really really good um, in this meta game where dragons are extremely strong and then I consider Raven's Basilicos as a really good weapon and I've also evaluated these units based on their stats because Lucina is obviously better than Krom so you would want to upgrade Lucina's weapon first. So that's my criteria and this is my ranking and I'm honestly gonna be upgrading Alms Falchion and maybe showcase that in arena because I just face so many dragons if you guys saw my arena videos. So I'm definitely gonna be following this myself and like I said a big factor for this is the availability of the units and which unit is your favorite so you should obviously consider that. And that is gonna be it for this video. I really really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did then please be sure to leave a like and if you haven't already then make sure to subscribe for more Fire Emblem Heroes videos in future. So with that being said I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.